Alright, so we're finally picking up on where we left off with the little series I made uh, like a few weeks ago about uh, about me talking about the ceiling fan history and washer history of both my grandparents because uh, some guy that watches my videos wanted to know that stuff. So instead of just telling him um, in a gigantic comment, I'm just going to make these videos. We're still on my dad's side of the family, so this is so these grandparents are my dad's parents. So I don't know um, all the washers they all had. I mean, I don't know the washers they had and stuff when I wasn't around and all that crap, or when I was a baby. So we're going to be starting off with a washer they had um, from uh, since the um, I believe the the middle two thousands up to early two thousand tens. They had a mysterious washer that I can't, um, well, I mean, I predict, they, I predict it's a Kim Moore, but they had a mysterious direct drive washer, uh, that I, I don't know what it was, but I do know that it had this, uh, this black grayish porcelain tub, and it also had the exact same agitator you see in the picture. I'm pretty sure this is called, um, uh, Flex Vein, uh, the Flex Vein agitator, maybe, I, I, I forgot. When I was little, I was fascinated at how the top, of, well, the middle of the agitator had eight fins, and the bottom had four fins. I don't know, I guess I was into numbers back then. The agitator did not have any fabric, fabric softener cap on it. For some reason, with these flex fan agitators, I, uh, I, don't, I don't usually see people put any fabric softener dispensers on them, even though that the specific cap that's on top of them... Are the are the exact same caps that the dual action Kimball agitators have, and you're able to put fabric softener dispensers on those. I have seen it. I I have seen one uh, with the fabric softener dispenser on it once on a on some Maytag washer. I you know I I can explain. The dude in the video probably replaced the original agitator with that one. That was one of the that was one of the rare Maytag direct drive washers because those things existed once. So that's really it with this washer. But before we move on, I, I forgot to actually mention that uh, I I'm predicting it's a Kimmore. That's why that's why I think. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember the the door opening up on its side like a normal Kimmore uh, agitator. I mean, a normal Kimmore washer door would do. Or lid, they're called lids. Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty sure it opened up for, um, at the front, so open forward, not to any side. If it opened up to the side, I would remember it, but I don't remember any of that. I only remember the agitator and what type of tub it had. And I also remember it was like it was a direct drive. One day it was just randomly replaced, with no warning. It was replaced with a Roper direct drive washer, which is, uh, Roper is an off-brand, I mean not, it's a little mini brand that Whirlpool owns, since Whirlpool likes to create lots of little mini brands along with buying other brands like KitchenAid and Maytag. So if you ever see a Roper washer, just, uh, just so you know, it's technically a, I mean it's technically a Whirlpool washer. The, the the Roper washer had a, the blackish grayish porcelain tub that you would usually see on your grandma's washer, just like the last washer before it. And it also had the dual action Whirlpool agitator that you see now, like the, the exact same one with the exact same fabric softener dispenser on it. It didn't have that cool, that cool looking cap on it. That washer lasted from uh, the early 2010s to like 2017 I believe this washer here was the washer that um, that brought me into a world of neutral draining before this washer I had no idea that neutral drains existed well a neutral drain would exist in a washer because I grew up with a washer that spun out all the water aka the Maytag Atlantis washer that one had no neutral drain so I thought all washers um, would spin the water out of the tub when it would go into its spin cycle. But this Roper washer here showed me that that's not the case. Yeah, there's one time where it stopped washing and I heard a noise um, after 
and I was like, oh, it must be spinning. Let's check it out. So I kind of just peeked into the tub. Just uh, the lid was just a little open, not enough to set off the switch to shut off the washer. And I seen it. The agitator was not moving whatsoever. I was like, what's going on here? It, why, why is it not moving? I thought it was supposed to be spinning. So yeah, I was like, uh, is it actually draining the water before it spins? And then eventually I saw it uh, go into a spin cycle. I was amazed. That was pretty cool. I forgot to mention the dryer to the last washer. Um, so about the last washer's dryer. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a matching dryer or if it was something different. Uh, so yeah. But I do know with the roper washer, the entire the entire washer and dryer was replaced. So um, there was a roper washer. My grand my grandparents got the entire set. The roper washer did not last as long as the as the washer. Wait, did I meant to say that did I say the roper washer? All right, I meant to say the roper dryer did not last as long as the washer. And you know, I was actually kind of glad because it was loud. It was squeaky. Yeah, it was very annoying. It broke and it was replaced by a Sansom dryer. Um, so yeah, that Sansom dryer would play a big part in the in the rest of this video. Well, I mean, not the rest, but you know what I mean. It will play a bigger part than just being a replacement dryer. So eventually before the washer just straight out died, my grandma said that she wanted a new washer. And I was like, oh, okay, but I didn't, I didn't want it, I didn't want the roper washer to be replaced. It was still working, it was still doing its job, but my grandma wanted a new washer. So we would go to Lowe's uh, here and there and look at some. My grandma wanted a, a Sansom, a, match, a matching Sansom washer since we had the, the Sansom dryer. I tried talking her out of it because that was a time where, I'm pretty sure that was a time where, uh, the Sansom washers would explode in, uh, during their spin cycles. I didn't want my grandparents having that in their house. So I tried talking her out of it, but eventually the Roper washer, uh, during the wash cycle one day, it the, the motor just exploded into sparks. So my grandparents had no choice but to replace it. They could have fixed it, but it probably would have been very expensive or it, it I mean, it would have been um, as expensive as buying a new one. So they didn't buy any other HE washer. They went ahead and bought the Sansom matching washer. I was not too happy about it. I did try to tell my grandma that this was not the best idea because uh, these, these things would explode. There was a time where they would explode in their spin cycle. And like I said earlier, I did not want my grandparents having that. But lucky for me, that never happened. My grandparents only had it for like two weeks. And then one day when me and my sister were spending the night there, I noticed that there was lots of water on the ground where the washer was. And usually, usually that'll just be, that'll just be because uh, the kitchen rags, my grandma would just throw them next to the washer and stuff. So that's why I thought. But I noticed there was so much water. It was like a big puddle of water. So I got very, I mean, it was very suspicious. So I looked under to see if anything was going on. And I noticed that it was leaking. So, <laughs> yeah, my grandparents called a repairman. And he looked at it and he just said, uh, yeah, it just had to be replaced. So, yeah, not even three weeks and it already had to be replaced. They replaced it with a commercial Maytag HE washer. Yep, it's a commercial grade washer, so it's a commercial. Though it's a it's a more fancy commercial washer. It's not like the ones you see in a hotel. So yeah, these are uh, these are commercial washers, but they're also meant for home use too. It's whatever. My grandparents really like really like it, and they still have it today because nothing happened to it. It doesn't have its fabric softener cap on the agitator. But that's fine because uh, there's a fabric softener dispenser in the tray over here. They never got the matching dryer to the washer. So that Sansom dryer is still there today and it still works fine. 
Oh, wait, wait. I, I forgot to mention. There's one time where the Samsung dryer actually broke down. That something went bad on it. And instead of my grandparents replacing it, they decided to actually get it fixed. I guess it wasn't that big of a problem. So a repairman replaced something on it and it started working again. So yeah, no other problems ever since. Yep, reliable, am I right? Reliable, reliable. These machines are good. They're good old reliable machines. Even if they're, even if they're supposed to be, to be commercial grade, they still break on you. Actually, never mind. Take that. I take that back. I don't know if the Samsung washer was a commercial grade. I mean, I meant to say Samsung dryer. I don't know if that's a commercial dryer. Pretty sure it's just a normal home use one. It might say it's a commercial grade, just like this Maytag washer. I don't know. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, that that's actually it for my dad's side of the family, grandparents, you know. So in the next two videos, I'm going to be talking about my uh, my grandparents on my mom's side. And holy crap, I can't wait to discuss the washer history with them. Like holy crap, you guys will be entertained. It's so funny. It's so cool. It's just so so many turns. <laughs> Alright, well, see you there.